Howdy folks, Dreadshells here, and welcome back to World of Tanks. Uh, got another SP1C game to show you guys here today on Sand River. Uh, this particular mode is on Assault Defense. Um, and going through the team compositions here real quick before we start the game. First of all, looking at the matchmaking. The matchmaking is super nice as far as tiering is concerned. Uh, so uh, the higher the tier you are in the matchmaking, the more obligation that you have not only to do uh, a vision and a spotting role for your team, but also to do uh, a decent amount of damage for your team. Remember, don't box yourself into this uh, one-track mindset of uh, sitting in a bush somewhere the entire game and um, not adjusting to what's happening in the battle and not trying to do your own damage to affect the outcome of the battle. So the higher the tier you are in the matchmaking, uh, try to uh, push yourself to do more damage as well. Also, um, the uh, mobility of the enemy team and our team is pretty decent, I would say about half. Um, they got some dot bottom tier scouts here with the 2801 and ELC. Uh, we'll have to watch out for the 2801 because uh, if he's using the derp gun, uh, he can actually pen me with his HE shells. Um, as the SP1C doesn't have a lot of armor. Uh, once again, I don't remember the, the exact armor values, but basically uh, armor is kind of meaningless on scouts uh, in general, except maybe the LTTB or the 54 lightweight. Um, but how I think about armor for scouts is does it have HE armor or does it not have HE armor in the sense of if someone shoots an HE shell at you is an automatic pen or not. And in this case, usually when you shoot an HE shell at a SP1C, it's usually an automatic pen, uh, unless the tracks absorb the shell, which is uh, which is fairly rare. But uh, but anyway, so yeah, a 2801 ELC Cromwell's a very mobile tank. They have their own SP1C uh, KV13, which is uh, quite an interesting uh, medium tank. Uh, I'm thinking about rebuying it uh, for myself and uh, playing it uh, the first time I played. Uh, it through I didn't enjoy it but I didn't know a lot about the game at the time uh, it's got quite decent armor for a tier 7 medium uh, and its mobility is quite decent as well um, their tier 7 mediums uh, have average mobility I would say uh, but they have some uh, really good mobility here with their top tier mediums so uh, I need to be careful about how aggressive I play even though I'm top tier so tactically aggressive basically and as far as the positioning on where you should go in a scout at least uh, or any tank with good gun depression will work as well um, the most important position that you can go to on sand river assault and if you're on the defending team is right here in g5 and g6 and in my opinion uh, if you're a lower tier scout it's uh, you can go up here to f nine and get some early vision on the enemy team and here in c7 d7 and d8 as they cross over this way into the nine zero lines but i think that uh, tactically this is probably the most important uh, position for the defending team to occupy here in g5 and, and in g6 so let's just start the game Uh, one other thing I need to mention about uh, uh, using that position, like I said, is uh, um, using good gun depression. Um, you need to keep in mind, though, you need to be careful of uh, tanks that get over here into E1 and in E2. Uh, if you crest up this, this ridge line here to try and spot into the middle area, enemy tanks that are sitting over here in D1, E1, uh, and D2, they can shoot you. So. Uh, always be on your toes and try to make it difficult for them to shoot you. Crest up and get some spots in on some enemy heavies. Uh, unfortunately, the 2801 spoils the rest of my uh, spotting peak because he's really super close. He was sitting up here in this D7 uh, dune and he was only a couple hundred meters away from me, so he easily spotted me. The enemy team do have one artillery, so I need to stay mindful of that. Uh, enemy already can hit you on this ramp here, especially when you're cresting as high as I am on this on this ramp. Uh, don't ask me how that uh, shell hit the 2801. I couldn't believe it myself in the battle. Uh, the shell didn't even look like it hit the hitbox of the tank. And of course, Artie uh, shoots at me because, you know, Artie prevents camping or something. Uh, 
Uh, I think that whoever came up with that phrase is probably not the sharpest knife in the box because Artie doesn't prevent camping because Artie doesn't shoot campers. Artie shoots spotted tanks, not unspotted tanks. And campers are usually unspotted. So Artie shoots the tanks that are spotted, which is usually the frontline tanks. Get one shot in here to the ISU. Really bad to adjust, uh, not adjust my aim here on that rock and uh, unable to hit my second shot in my clip. But uh, I'm able to hit my third and final shot, and we are able to do uh, around 500 damage uh, to the ISU. Now that he's staying in cover, uh, I'm starting to crest higher and higher on this ridge. Um, pausing the game here so I can explain what I'm doing. Um, this might seem ridiculously risky to be doing here uh, this early in the battle, but there's a reason that I'm doing it. And that is because... Uh, first of all, their 2801 is dead, right? So I know that uh, that Vision mobile tank is out of the fight. Their SP-1C here, for some weird reason, came over here to trap himself in this corner here in E1 with the ISU. So that's another mobile platform that I don't have to worry about. Uh, the Pershing is uh, rushed down here into this backside ditch here early in the game, and he's sitting here, so I don't have to worry about him. Uh, and the ELC is over here on the zero line. So basically the only tanks that I need to be worrying about right now are two or three, and that's the KV-13, the Cromwell, and the Pershing. And since I've crested up this high for this long and I haven't spotted them, uh, they're either in one of two positions. Either they're on the back side of this D7 dune, right here directly in front of me on the other side of this dune, or they're up here on the zero line. Of course, they could be sitting back here along this B and A line, uh, or uh, I should say like kind of in this B5, B4 area, but it's kind of unlikely for the meta for that kind of uh, tank to be played like that. Um, so this is the reason why I'm getting so aggressive up here on this mid ridge is that I'm fairly confident that there's not a lot of tanks in front of me. Also, uh, my um, view range uh, when you're playing your tanks, you need to be confident that your view range is going to keep you safe. Uh, of course, that comes with uh, the caveat that you have a decent crew and have the correct equipment loadout. Um, that if you have really good view range, then you will be spotting the enemy before he, he, uh, they spot you, at least in certain angles. Of course, if they're sitting up here on this dune, we'll spot each other at the same time. But in, uh, in long distance situations, your view range and your camera rating will keep you safe because you will see them before they see you and you, you will be able to react. Um, and that's the other thing that I'm relying on here. But enough rambling, let's keep on going. See that they were peeking out there to shoot uh, one of my mediums there, but I wasn't reacting quick enough and missed an opportunity for a shot or two damage there. Cresting up over this ridge, you can actually get side shots into that uh, backside of that F0 position here. Uh, although it can be difficult as there's some, I think there's a rock right there. Really bad reaction uh, there, not reacting to the Cromwell and the ELC relocating there on the minimap. Luckily, uh, they didn't decide to engage me and luckily no one up here uh, in this uh, C9, C0 area that might be up there uh, shot at me. Some really, really bad situational awareness on my part uh, in that particular exchange. But now I'm moving up here and I'll explain why. Uh, just for the same reason that I was sitting up here so aggressively on the ridge is also the same reason that I'm deciding to move up here. Uh, because our team have cleared out this west corner, uh, which is awesome by the way, uh, hats off and kudos to them. They recognize that the uh, the weight of the enemy team is over here in the east and on the 9-0 lines. They recognized that and pushed around, willing to take a shot from the ISU, and they killed him and the SP-1C. And now that the Bulldog has made it this far over here, I know that there's no one sitting here at least, kind of in this B3, B4 area, right? Uh, at least, <laughs> well, uh, if they are, then they're keeping their heads down and not being very helpful to their team. So, um, because of that, I know that I'm safe to move up at least to this D6 uh, area on the back side of this dune right here. Uh, this is a very deadly position uh, if you can get to it 
uh, and use it in uh, assault mode defense because basically you can start to get vision here on the zero line and start to pressure enemy arty that might be sitting over here in a4 and a5 Looking to my left, looking to my right, and deciding to crest here to try and spot their snipers. And the enemy already, uh, I caught him as he was trying to retreat from our west push. And he decides to turn and aim at me and try to get a snapshot off before he dies. And uh, luckily he doesn't. No snapshot for you. Uh, too many times already turned 90 degrees and shoot and aim and hit me and, and one shot me. It's really frustrating. And now I can peek back up here and crest and uh, take out uh, one of their snipers there. And I have a shot here on the tiger with my uh, last shot in my clip. Now I'm reloading. And it turns out that there was an Optic 416 that was lurking around here in the north. Uh, that my Bulldog uh, MT-71 spotted that I wasn't reacting to quick enough. But he's being really, really super nice and he's ignoring me and he's deciding to engage our Panther 88. Or actually, I'm not sure if he knows who he wants to engage. Trying to avoid the ram there by my own teammate, the, the Panther 88, to try and get around him and uh, try to secure the kill there on the Object 416. And uh, we were able to do so. Not that it was any worry about uh, the, the 416 not dying, it was just more of trying to kill him before he gets a shot of damage in on somebody. Uh, you always wanting to be trying to maximize the economy of your HP, I like to call it, basically where um, you are always doing uh, more damage to the enemy than they are to you and doing it efficiently. Get a nice track shot there on our second shot here and aiming in here for the, uh, to secure the kill. And of course Murphy Law says that the shot goes slightly high and right and uh, we clip the side of his tracks and his side armor and it bounces and unfortunately the KV-13 stays alive. Trying to dodge the shell here from the Tiger-1 uh, um, while I'm reloading here. Uh, and you notice that one of the super nice things about the SP-1C's gun here is that its reload time is actually really really good considering that it's an autoloader. Um, d uh, halfway debating to dump my last two shells into the IS but I see that uh, because he doesn't have anyone uh, to occupy him frontally that he can just turn her turn around and engage me and unfortunately because i was indecisive uh and made the 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 bad decision of of debating whether or not to crest over and shoot him that gave him time to come ar up around and shoot me uh also the uh, another alternative that i could have done here as he's able to get a shot on me now is that i could have retreated this way over to directly east and then get behind the student to the south um, although I would have had to engage the Pershing um, so unfortunately I'm gonna take a shot of damage here that was completely my fault and he smacks me real hard and he rolls uh, somewhat high actually uh, IS has 390 alpha damage uh, and he was able to roll for Actually, no, I took a little bit of ramming damage there from the Panther 88, so scratch that. And uh, the game has actually turned into a really, really close match. Uh, our team are uh, doing their best to throw this game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all our tanks that went into the center draw here um, played really, really poorly. Uh, and uh, weren't able to manage uh, their HP very well. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, one of our frontline tanks here, the T-32, just kind of lollygagging out here on the zero line. I'm not sure what he's doing over there. There is no arty. And uh, able to lead a shot. It's very difficult to uh, lead shots in the SP-1C uh, as your shell velocity is so slow. Uh, it's kind of if you've played the um, if you played the uh, 2801 the tier 6 German Scout then uh, you'll have kind of a feeling for how the shell velocity works with the SP1C uh, fortunately here the T32 is now engaging frontally and he's able to spot the Pershing 
Uh, didn't get spotted there with uh, my first shot, but uh, the um, the uh, Pershing, after he drove across uh, uh, into the open and got around that bush, he spotted me with my second shot. Was reloading another standard AP clip there and realized that I only had two uh, shells of AP left, so I don't want to load two-thirds of a clip, so I reload to heat, even though it's going to be more expensive because I want to be uh, potentially able to do a full clip of damage here. Thought about putting a, a second shot in there, but uh, thought better of it as uh, the IS was looking at me. Uh, and the IS can potentially one-shot me here if he rolls high enough. Uh, I do have 454 HP and he average rolls 390, but he can potentially one-shot me if he rolls high enough, so I didn't want to risk it. Our team do a great job of cleaning up the IS-6 there. And now it's just a matter of flanking this IS as he's all by himself now. And a really poor shot there with my first shot uh, into the IS. You see the downside of using heat, as heat is um, uh, notorious for doing non-damage to spaced armor, including tracks, and I had a really bad angle on the side of the hole of the IS. And it was a, an honestly a lazy shot by me, my first shot. But I adjusted my aim and went for the side of the of the IS's turret with my final two shots and able to do damage there. And uh, we're able to clean him up and uh, and win the game. So fortunately, um, uh, we were actually um, doing quite well uh, pushing through this west flank as far as our team is concerned and encapsulating the enemy team. And it looked like it was going to be a fairly easy win, but uh, the enemy team pulled it back a uh, uh, even and uh, technically had the advantage as uh, one of our tanks were artillery here uh, but uh, uh, fortunately we were able to overcome that and uh, just uh, use our mobility to outflank and isolate enemy targets like the KV-13 that was over here and the Pershing that decided to come back here over to the east here in uh, I think it was at H6 or H7 something like that uh, and able to secure the kill on him as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching uh, some of this gameplay here on Sand River Assault Defense uh, and saw the importance of this position here in G5 and G6. We didn't get a whole lot of uh, vision reward here. We got some initial spots at the beginning of the game, but unfortunately the 2801 uh, screened us off and we weren't able to con uh, continue our vision roll in the middle, at least in the early game. But when it became clear that the enemy team had dispersed mostly to the left and mostly to the right, I uh, moved up here to D7, or excuse me, to D6, uh, took out the enemy arty. It's always really important to try to be constantly reassessing what's going on in the battlefield. Um, uh, uh, it's sometimes a bad habit of of people like to get into this mindset of they predetermine what they're going to do, um, which is fine at the beginning of the battle, right? Because we all do that. Uh, but uh, they don't... Uh, adapt and readjust from that once the situation in the battle has changed, right? So it's always a good idea to reevaluate. Um, really good opportunities to do that are in between your reloads, if you're in an autoloader, uh, in between engagement times, like if you're shooting at an enemy um, and you get a shot in on him or he shoots you and you get back into cover and then there's a lull of, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds, right? Um, that's a lot of downtime that you have time to take a look at the mini-map and see what's going on. So uh, that is a, a technique that you can use. Anyway, uh, before I continue rambling too much, I uh, want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, wish you guys the best of luck out there on your Sand River games. Good hunting and take care.